Stray. What are you doing? What are you up to? You're reading. No way. That's something new. You never read. What's going on, Stray? What are you reading? Can I see? Oh, Bumi Manusia. I am familiar with this. What I want to know is why are you reading this? Are you awake? You are awake. What's that? Oh, you're just trying to learn. Hmm, I don't trust you. I have a feeling you have another reason that you're reading all of a sudden. You seem to have a lot of books around, Stray. What's happening? Hmm? Hmm. I have a feeling I'm going to find out why Stray is doing all this reading lately. It makes no sense. He doesn't like to read. He likes to eat. He likes to sleep. Ah, somebody's here. Ah! Payoman Farid, the Director General for Culture for Republic of Indonesia. Welcome! Thank you. Thank you for coming by. Now I and know what... this? Now this is Trey, by the way. Right. And I know now why he is reading uh -huh. these particular books. Because you wrote the dissertation for right. uh, Rewriting the Nation, correct? Yes. Oh, and I guess that makes a lot of sense now. Why? He's trying to steal the show. He's always trying to steal the show. <laughs> he probably heard that you were coming and wanted to get all this out to impress you. I don't know if you're impressed, but... Um, but really you, impressed, yes. I'm a little impressed that the cat can read as well. Probably but, uh, doing the cat translation for <laughs> the real That's right. Well, unfortunately, uh, Paz Herman cannot translate cat. He does not speak cat. So you're going to have to save that for another time. But anyway, buddies, I want to say a big welcome to all of you. Thank you for tuning in for this episode of Buddy Talk, along with me, Paul Pellelli, and Stray, as you can see. And today, we're going to have a very special conversation with the one who wrote the dissertation on rewriting the nation, Pramudia, and the politics of decolonization. Yes, I am, of course, talking about the Director General of Culture for the Republic of Indonesia, Hilmar Farid. Stay tuned. All right, here on Buddy Talk today, we have a very special guest, Pahil Marfarid. Pahil Mar, thank you for being here today once again. Thank you. So, first of all, congratulations on you and the entire Indonesian government because uh, you have so far returned more than 400 uh, artifacts back into the country from the Netherlands. Um, so it's 472. 72. Wow, yeah. that is a lot. That is a huge number. So congratulations. So can you tell us briefly, what was the process? Because we first heard about the news, it was almost a couple of years ago now. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, well, it was actually a very long process. Um, it started like three years ago. Okay. When there was like changes in the um, Dutch government about the policies uh, concerning these colonial collections. That, that's what they called them. Okay. So, um, and yeah, it took us two years to discuss. We went back and forth and then, yeah, uh, discussed the modalities of it, like how to return, where to return to, mm -hmm. um, and how to do it, and which collection. That the, was the most important question, actually. Mm -hmm. So, which collection of um, many, uh, like hundreds of thousands of, of items from Indonesia many, wow. in the colonial collections, but um, not all of them were um, what they call looted art. Okay. Yeah. So we only focus on the um, that category. Okay, looted art meaning something that was just unrightfully taken, as taken, opposed yeah. to something that was actually perhaps given or, or bought. Given. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. True. So yeah, um, and we made that selection. Um, it was a very meticulous process because there was like documentation. You have to write on everything, like do all the research, the background of these objects. But finally, then we arrived at the conclusion that this 472. Um, will be the first batch. Okay. So there will be other collections uh, returning in the following years. But yeah, I think it took us so long because they're uh, to, to reach the agreement between mm -hmm. the two governments, like mm -hmm. how to do it, the modalities of it. But now, since we already have an agreement, mm -hmm. it's in place. So we can expect other uh, batches would like more smoothly then. Yeah. Okay. So this is, continue, this is still ongoing, yeah. it's an ongoing yes. process, but it should be more streamlined now. Um, what are some of the artifacts that are included in this 470? What are some of the unique ones that you came across? Well, um, in the first batch, then you will have um, a collection of golden rings, okay. like, that, like hundreds of them. Wow. And very beautiful ones from the um, kingdom of Lombok, mm -hmm. yeah, taken back in the 19th century. But you also have very important um, statues okay. 
from uh, the Chandi in Singosari Chandi in, in uh, Malang. Mm -hmm. um, there are four uh, big statues like that. They're very important, not only I think historically, but also in, in a cultural sense. Yes. Uh, people are still going to the temples, um, doing rituals, etc. So this would mean reintegrating um, all these artifacts back to where they belong. So that is, I think, the most significant uh, part of the uh, returning of the objects. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit. A lot of these, some of these artifacts will be returned to its rightful owners or heirs of the owners. Um, but what about some of them that are more difficult to trace or if they don't have a home? Like what happens to them? Because a lot of them are priceless now by, by this time. Sure, like it's, yeah. been, it's been so long, it's been so many years. So would there be like a specific probably museums maybe that they can be directed to? Or what would, where, are they, where are they all going to find a home? All of the collections are going back to the National Museum here. Okay. Yeah, so um, they actually belong to the state. Okay. Okay, so they belong to the state, yeah. okay. A state um, a property, but of course we uh, are willing to cooperate. Actually, uh, just before uh, coming here, I had this meeting with the museums in Lombok. They okay. are eager to have the collection shown in Lombok. For sure, okay. yeah, we will do that. I mean, we will uh, provide um, wide access to these collections and we are willing also to work together with museums, galleries, um, to uh, do some shows you know, uh, oh, nice. with the collection. So yeah, that's for sure. But um, the most difficult part is actually to identify and to reconstruct the story. Mm. I mean, they, they call it the provenance research. You know? okay. um, to retrace when did it, uh, was it taken and when was it brought to the Netherlands, etc. So that's a very meticulous <laughs> process, yeah. like all the documentation, doing the research. But yeah, yeah, fine. It's like, re like retracing footsteps that are very old. Exactly. So it's very hard exactly. To do. I mean, I mean, if you look at the story of the um, process itself, it's already a, a narrative in itself. Absolutely. Right? So you kind of like, now that you're drawing me a picture, you remind me of like a modern day Indiana Jones. Because <laughs> he's always looking for artifacts as well. It's a very difficult journey to find all of these little things. And he's always trying to return the right. artifacts home. Right. Do you, you sh I should get you a fedora. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, since you're here, it's not only Stray that's here. Well, we have a, another friend dropping by and I believe she's okay. here right now. Uh, don't mind her, she gets excited when I have This is Shafira, by the way. Hi. Hi. We met several times. Right. Yes. yes okay. I remember. In a theater. Oh, she's <laughs> always at the movies. Several films. <laughs> <laughs> films created by uh, creatures uh, from here in Nisha. Yes. She's speaking about that he was what? It's like Indiana Jones? It's like Indiana Jones, yeah, speaking of movies. Ah, probably it's related to this. Ooh, uh -huh. <laughs> what is that? I have special <laughs> uh, deliveries for you, Papa. Okay. What is it? Please open it. Let's have a look. Ta da! Lima Sakawan. Is it a new version? I think it's the Indonesian version. Yes. Wow, you need light. Yeah, I remember, remember the these books. I had I read these versions when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah okay. light. I, had, I had a whole you bunch of books. You can tell us about this. <laughs> please. Oh, wow. Well, I have to check. Oh, yeah. There I can. <laughs> okay, please. Tell us about that. Yeah. All right, just put it here. So, yeah, um, <laughs> it's a long story. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> My father, when he uh, so we lived in Germany before, mm -hmm. yeah, you were born um, and there, we went back. Second, right? I was born there, yes, yeah. Yes, correct. And uh, when we returned to Indonesia, um, my father was looking like what he can actually do. You no, know? mm -hmm. like uh, he was a journalist for many years, working at the German radio. Um, and one thing that he noticed is the absence of um, children. Okay. at that time. I mean, you have many beautiful stories from Indonesia, mm -hmm. but little, um, only a small amount of books um, from international writers. Books, no? right. Right. So that was his idea, no? how to bridge that gap. No? So bring international renowned writers from anywhere of the world. Mm -hmm. But then you translate it into Bahasa Indonesia and okay. he made it this as a job. I mean, it's one of the few professional translators, I should say. Right. Okay, so back then you did have children's books, but not in Bahasa. That was what, what era was that around? 70s. In the 70s. 70s. Okay, well. I mean, beautiful uh, books in Bahasa Indonesia from Indonesia. Right, but no foreign books no. had been translated yeah. at that time. So that was. And he made a lifelong career out of Right. Translated. Yeah, you saw that niche and that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Probably because of that. And you are helping your father as well. I was, yeah, like when I was like, well, high school, yeah. See? High school. That's where the. My first translation. Of Do you remember it still? 
Well, <laughs> it's <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> uh, Amy and Hawk, I hear that was. Ah, okay. <laughs> so obviously so you, you were. get the answer. Wow. You, I do. You I know? know. Now it makes sense. <laughs> so Thanks. being exposed to children, because I think children's books are so integral. They may see simple, seem simple on the surface, oh. but it ingrains this foundation in little children yeah. because the stories always have a moral. They yeah. always yeah. have a, a yeah. great story behind it and characters. Yeah. How much did that affect your critical thinking, being exposed to all this children's oh. literature? Uh, yeah, when I was a, a younger, I really loved um, Astrid Lindgren's Pippi Longstocking, Longstocking in, yes, in, in English, no? Because it opened up um, my imagination mm -hmm. to so many things, like thinking the unthinkables. Mm -hmm. no? I'm seeing things from different, because it's always about perception, that book. Yes. The story is always, mm -hmm. my, she has that dream Mm -hmm. lived in that dreamy world of hers and then her father that captain the sailor mm -hmm. uh, brings stories from different parts of the world which are also unthinkable and imaginable right. no so that really opens up um, um, yeah a path for um, my imagination to develop and that was I think a very important part yeah in my formative years and yeah. speaking about um your experience, you read a book a lot, you are currently, or the government is currently restoring the Muaro Jambi as well. Yes. You just heard about this, right? Exactly. Recently. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and the director was Mia Dinata. Mm -hmm. uh, Muaro Jambi a Temple, which is the biggest Buddhist, I just know that it was the biggest Buddhist temple compound in Southeast Asia. Many of us didn't even know, living I in Indonesia, know. even the people Until, there, a lot of yes, them didn't the know. Muaro Jambi documentary right. uh, are released. How is it going so far? Yeah, it's, um, we are now in the process of uh, reconstructing some of the temples. There's okay. so many findings. It's a huge, as you said, yeah. it's the largest it's like a lost compound. city down there. Yeah, we will wow. store part of the, um, the uh, compound mm -hmm. um, and also uh, open it up for the public. Uh, we expect by next year. Really? That's You're really invited fast. for sure. Oh. And, um, and like every day, we still find uh, new things. Uh, uh, just last month, um, we found the Alun Alun, the, mm -hmm. yeah, the mm -hmm. square, mm -hmm. oh which is like for to receive um, guests, I think, no, at that yeah. time, no? and then we um, also find like little, um, what you call that, like little statues like that, okay, you know? yeah, uh, figurines, figurines, uh, um, and they are um, resembled to. The post Gupta oh, style in wow. India, which means that it's from the fourth, fifth century. Wow! So, um, <laughs> to yeah, this the estimate now. The mm. father's estimate that was built around the fifth or sixth century. Unbelievable! Yeah. Um, so it's like fifteen hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, still preserved. I mean, you have to look at the bricks. They're yeah. beautifully uh, made. You know? Yeah. Like quite big. Very strong. Structurally still sound. Yeah, yeah. 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 Fifteen hundred years. Yeah. Like, yeah. And we are using for the reconstruction, we sometimes have to use uh, modern bricks. Mm. Okay. And they will collapse like after twenty years. Yeah, not gonna last <laughs> nowhere close to what they did back in the day. Yeah. Oh my god. I wish I could build so, my house out of those bricks. Yeah. It was human yeah. mate. Yes, indeed. So Agreed then? Mm -mm. Indiana Jones 2.0. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we, got, we got more to come with uh, Hilmar Farid when we return here on Buddy Talk. I have Stay this tuned. imagination right in back. my mind. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs>
mm -hmm. back in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. So there's something uh, in her mind that right. was like driving her um, to, to do that. Um, my dad uh, left, I think, in 1960 to, to Europe and then he left there, um, started as a construction worker, mm -hmm. um, but then somehow managed to um, work for the Deutsche Welle, that was the German radio. Um, and their stories were so uh, fascinating to me. Like, um, when I was 17, I didn't know what to do, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. okay, at school, what do you want to do? Still under our parents' roof. Yeah. Yeah. Well, looking at their stories, though. Mm -hmm. So that was like kind of my reference to that. Um, and one thing that they always say to me that, I mean, you have to think um, on your own. I mean, you have to make the decisions. Not, not anyone else can. So I had a gap year after graduating from high school. Um, didn't know where to go, mm. right? So I just traveled. You know? I remember that encouraged me to think. Mm. Um, you imagine that, no? Like having that conversation. Mm. You think. But, <laughs> do then you decide. What you think yeah. is important. <laughs> that, that matters time. too. Exactly, and it yeah. forces you really to, to think. Yes. You know? So I traveled, uh, uh, took my time to um, make up my mind what I wanted to do. Of course, I uh, kept on um, uh, discussing these ideas with him um, and my mom. So, and then came up to that with the idea that doing something that is related to culture. Oh. So, but my brother was in anthropology already, so I didn't want to go there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Top competition. Uh, we have anthropologists at home, one. <laughs> right. So I picked history, okay. um, which was, yeah, really interesting. Um, as a subject, I loved it. Um, but yeah, back to my parents, then um, the way they uh, guided me like, throughout this, um, my journey you know, was very, um, yeah, encouraging in the sense that, yeah, you do what you think is best. You know? um, while I have experience with other, uh, my friends, with their parents, mm -hmm. their relationship is more like instruction. Exactly, you know, that's like, what I was going to mm, say. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you have to go there, study mm -hmm. this, study that. Be a doctor, be a lawyer. Back in the days, that's yeah. what most parents would have wanted. Right, right. And the way they uh, lived, um, they moved from one place to another, always felt at home. Mm. Yeah, which nice. is, I, th I think, is also another quality that I see in them. No, they don't feel, um, say, what you call that, like um, inferior okay. oh. when they are in Europe. Right. My yeah. mom, especially, you know. Mm. I mean, she speaks th three different languages like that, mm -hmm. fluent, more fluent in Dutch than Indonesian. Mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, but that kind of attitude you know, to life in general is what I think um, makes me then... Who you are today. Yeah, what, what I am now, but also think that this is the meaning of Madeka. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. Yes. Like, like having your own... Um, Position. Decisions, like fully thoughts, exactly. control of your of your life. Yeah, yeah I get wow. I get goosebumps because of we course. always say we always say we want our kids to 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 have that freedom to make their own decisions. Feel but it's so much harder when you're actually doing yeah, it because yeah. you want to you kind of want to push them, make yeah. sure that they're in the right direction. Yeah. How much of this kind of like freedom that you were allowed mm -hmm. is now a big part of how you kind of make your decision now these days? In your, you have a very structured life now. Yes. You have things that you're responsible for, but do you still have that part of you that's that kind of like, sure. yeah? Sure, that's yeah, sure. Um, uh, even in my work, um, my line of work now, yes. in the government, um, I still have that kind of a space, you know, really to think things truly and then um, have that liberty uh, to entertain like discussions, etc. No? So that. That's, I think, integ integral to, to, to what I'm doing right now. Nice. You know? So the way I manage things is always also open for discussion, mm. uh, let people to speak their mind. Because what is important, not trying to be just like liberal like that, <laughs> not just like democratic, no. <laughs> but I mean, you cannot um, actually get the best out of mm. your team yeah. without that kind of That's true. Approach, yeah? So you have to let them speak their mind. And sometimes because we come from different cultures, not everyone is like um, outspoken, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. some are very quiet and you have to encourage them to be part of that team. Sure. So that, I think, the teaching of my parents that affect me the most. You know? Yeah. Trying to care 
uh, for people um, so in order to get the best out of them. And not to micromanage them. Exactly. It sucks to have yeah, to micromanage yeah, yeah. anyway, yeah, yeah. right? Let people do what they're that's supposed exactly. to do. So the key is space. Yeah, you have that's space, right. you have room to grow. Yeah. And speaking of making decisions, yes. we're going to test our decision-making skills oh, wow. right now in our <laughs> next buddy challenge, Never Have I Ever. Okay. Have you ever played Never Have I Ever? So, yeah. okay, so basically, <laughs> we're gonna put up five different choices on the board. Uh -huh. So we each, we each get to choose one. One by one, yes. And then it'll pop up with a question, but we're all gonna answer it one okay. by one, okay? Okay, yes. We're gonna, uh, do you wanna start us off, Shifu? Okay, uh -huh. let's okay. open it. Show so, us how it's done. Um, there are five uh, virtual cards. I chose number one. Number one, ooh, Never good old number have one. I ever. Okay. Never, Never have, have I, I ever, ever Googled, Googled myself. myself. You answer first. I have. You have. <laughs> when? When was that? Do you have. do it a lot? No. No? Uh, to ch okay. Uh, okay, there is a time when someone uh, asked for my pictures. I okay. have to send them. Oh, I don't have any proper pictures. You didn't pictures. have any pictures. So <laughs> I Google and I, you know, I click the really? images. Oh. Exactly, I found it. Really? Probably someone took me when, when I was amazing. broadcasting and I just captured it and I sent them. So I got my Very professional simple. pictures. All right. You Google. From Google. Then. Uh, have you, Ayo Hilmar, ever Googled yourself? Yes. Yes, you have. <laughs> okay. Right? What did you discover? Probably quite often. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. from time to time, I need to check. Okay. But something bad said about oh, me. Oh, true. <laughs> All right, okay. Have hey, that's you? the most honest oh, answer. Me, I Googled myself. Uh, the first time was a few years ago. And I've done it probably a couple more times since. Very disappointed with my results. Really? I don't have a Wikipedia page. <laughs> There's not any news about me. <laughs> All that popped up at the time was Facebook. Now, if I do it, LinkedIn. Oh, yeah. That's about it. Yeah, but yeah. that's oh, standard. And my Instagram. Yeah, so there you go, guys. Google. Somebody please Everyone. talk about me online so I can Google myself. All right. I'll find more. Interesting. Your turn, Pa. But Hilmar, go ahead. My turn. And one, uh, one has been taken. So two to five. Two to five. There you go. Okay. Stop Let's right? pick four. Never ever, nef never, never have I ever lied to my parents about what I'm doing. Oh, okay. <laughs> now it's getting interesting. <laughs> have okay. you? Have you ever? This is an interesting session. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. Yes, okay. Do you remember what it was about? Um, yeah. Um, okay. um, I went on a motorbike tour. Uh, okay. Yeah, although my father um, said, don't do that. Doesn't yeah. approve of me, okay. Um, and you have to stay at home, just make sure that you're not going. Yeah. Okay. okay, I'm not going. Yeah, but I took my motorbike out um, somewhere else. I said, okay. no, not to, to that tour. The tour would be like a long trip, right? Yeah, to, yeah, yeah, to okay. Bandung. All right. Oh, okay. It's like a two-day day thing. Uh, so I went. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> he was really upset. Okay. But yeah, oh, he found I, out. I, he found out finally. Oh, okay. Okay. Stupid me, because I had that. At that time, you could still... Uh, there was a stretch from Jakarta to Bandung right. uh -huh. uh, on a toll road. Okay. Oh. Yeah, motorbikes. Can oh, you can actually go yeah, back then. Okay. It was like 100 rupee or something. Uh. And I, yeah, stupid me, I kept oh, that. You the kept ticket, that. the receipt, the toll <laughs> receipt. Oh my God, what is this? <laughs> that blew up my cover. So. Oh. This says Jakarta to Bandung. There's no, there's no way around it. Very cool. All right. We We're going to rewind uh, another part of your life. Let's uh, have a look. I'm gonna show <laughs> we have so many things. <laughs> I'm going to show you a picture, I think. Okay. So this was you... Uh, uh, you're going to tell us when this was. Oh. <laughs> Very cool hair, I must say. How long did you have long hair for? Uh, was it years? Um, university. Um, yeah. okay. It was 1988. This is, I think, 2012. Oh, so it was a while. Yeah. So yeah. this was your yeah. signature look. Uh, yeah, 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 for many, many years, for decades. Um, and I can tell that you're into like uh, creative arts as well by, <laughs> by your look. So were you were you forced to change your appearance when you decided I've got to get more serious look here because I'm going to be working for the government? No, no, it was way no. before that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cut my hair. When was that? Um, well, I think 2013. Okay. Yeah. Do you miss it? Yeah. 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 Okay. But well, interesting when when Pak Muhajir, he uh, was the minister of uh, yes. education in Muhajir Effendi before, Ray. and he um, knew about this, thing. Hmm. and then he asked, "Why don't you grow your hair again?" <laughs> like I'm not allowed. Or, Who says that? Like, just, <laughs> go ahead. It's true. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, now I think things are already changing, no? Yeah. <laughs> what do you miss the most, Pat, uh, before you join with the government? What do you miss the most? 
Um, freedom. <laughs> less working Trevor. hours. Less working hours, right? Just travel, less working hours and yeah. all that. Yeah, like, yeah. have that time for yourself. Yeah. Like, yeah. Now you're absorbed into yeah. so many different things. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I know you're a book buff, but do you have any movie recommendations? Uh, Indonesian or anything? Anyone, anything. Well, yeah, I really love Ngeri Ngeri Sedap. Oh, okay. ah, very yeah. good choice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good. And it's it's uh, it shows no the richness um, in terms of expression. No? Very true. Even you have different comedic uh, expressions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so rich. So that is one of my um, it's favorite. Um, one more from abroad that you that is playing now in the, uh, but it's not a. Um, advertisement for, for okay, for the, yeah. Um, I really love uh, Indiana Jones. Ah, yeah. the latest one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the reason for that is that in that film, Harrison Ford uh, really is already freed from that. Okay. Uh, his previous role. Yes. And now he's at the age that he can do anything he wants. Okay. <laughs> ah, <laughs> in liberated. Terms of, of film, in terms of yeah. like, because like, he has already yeah. that. Like, That's true. And yeah. It's a beautiful thing okay. uh, to see how uh, they are playing with the historical reference mm -hmm. and back and forth. It's really nice to see. So in the end, the, the, the most recent one um, is really kind of a reflection of as well, no? Or perhaps a little but, foreshadowing uh, for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank I you for you notice about that part. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, thank you so much for coming by. Thank this you has been for such an uh, interesting me. conversation and uh, continued success with the returning of the artifacts here yeah. to Indonesia. Very, very excited to be able to visit and see them for That's ourselves. Great. And you can drop by anytime and feel free to bring Stray with you. I always offer that to all you guys. All right, we got to go, guys. Uh, but before that, we just want to remind you all uh, not to forget to tune in every Saturday and Sunday night, our broadcast time here on C-Today News, for more fun episodes of Buddy Talk. On behalf of Stray Shafira, myself, along with Raden and the entire Buddy Talk crew, this is Paul Pallelli signing off for now. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Raden, bring us home. <laughs> Terima sebulan yang lalu selendang sutra mulai di saat itu turut serentak di dalam baktiku.